Okay, now the more fun stuff in invisible visual effects, hopefully. We're going to extend the set in the distance over here. So let's just first import our clip that is attached to this lesson. Now we have the read to selected. Let's just hit one to have this in the viewer. Double click again, always double check and turn on your auto alpha option box. Now let's just play this back in the proxy mode because it's quite a heavy file and it takes a while. So I'm gonna actually firstly change this to input so you can see it plays back the frames related to my clip. All right, let's play this back. Hit L key in the timeline to view this. All right, now it's too many frames to play this back. So I only played a certain amount of frames, but in general, you can actually jump throughout the timeline to see how it looks. Basically, it's a drone shot of a bunch of moving buildings. So obviously, we're not going to have them moving when we use it to do this set extension. So what we will be doing is, as we've done for most of this course thus far, is to freeze frame at a bunch of buildings with the correct perspective to use for our subtle set extension. Again, I got these from Pixabay. Link is also attached to the resource tab in case you're curious. But random plug for Pixabay aside, let's start selecting a bunch of nice buildings to use in our shot. Again, if you want to view this, I recommend just double clicking on the footage in a media player outside of Nuke. It's much faster to view it. So in general, when I look at my footage around here, as you can see it's a drone shot. I would say that this building looks nice. So we might want to remember, okay, this around here and then a few other buildings in between. So I'm going to go to that point where I think that best shot is around nine seconds or around where this, this iconic glass panel building is. Find one that's ideal for the correct perspective of our background. Again, we have this one, we can pipe another input to the viewer too. Okay, and then we're going to do a quick frame hold. So hit tab, search for frame, enter frame hold. I'm going to basically change the first frame to 393 as we've agreed just now. We're going to use this building and perhaps some of the surroundings as well. Now I'm going to do a quick roto node, uh, essentially to go in and grab in all the details here. But if you're too lazy to roto, <laughs> I've already rendered out the two sets of buildings we will be using that has the roto and the edge blur on them for you to use. But if you want to really follow along and kind of experience the heartaches and the hardships of being a rotoscoper, then go ahead and follow along. I'm going to hit tab, search for roto, and I'm basically going to outline buildings. It's going to take a while, just so you know. I'm going to turn off my proxy mode so I can actually look at all the details clearly since I'm already frame holding this frame and viewing it in the viewer. And I'm going to start basically doing the roto right here. Now, in order to create a curved point, in case I did not describe this earlier, you just press hold and drag your left mouse button to pull out a smooth bezier curved edge. Again, you don't have to be so detailed with this. And of course, if you don't want to roto, that's fine. I've also attached this rendered out as a single patch. And if you want to create sharp edges, just click without dragging. You can see that point, the pointy area is sharp. All right, so I'm done with the roto finally. Now, before we start the next one, I just wanted to remind you guys Make sure that when you're doing this, unlike me, I forgot, that you turn off the auto key icon right here. And you can see I accidentally created two keyframes. So I'm going to delete that keyframe. If this doesn't apply to you, then you can just ignore this. But in order to delete that keyframe, make sure your roto node selected, double click, go to the bezier, hit this to go to that keyframe that you don't want and hit delete. And now I'm going to turn off auto key, this icon here. And now you can see that your mask should turn white if it is not keyable. Now for those of you who were creating those sharp edges and wondering how to convert these edges to bezier, well that's quite simple. After you turn off auto key, make sure that your keyframe is on that one key that you made and then you can basically change this by going to the second icon here, select, press and hold and just change it to smooth points. And you can see now you've converted your sharp edges to smooth points. I'm going to undo that. Control Z to undo. That was just to show you how to convert that if you need it. Now, for those of you who haven't figured it out yet, I created this feathered area right under my mask in order to help it blend better, aside from the blur that we'll be using. And in order to do that, basically you select any point, 
let's just say this point right here. And you see this little line? If you pull this out, it creates a feathering edge over here. So that's what I did after I wrapped this up. I selected the points and you can control and adjust the feathering. Again, I'm just going to leave this here for you guys to see how I feathered it if you want to follow along. Alright, so once we have this roto, with the roto node selected, hit tab, search for edge blur, enter. And again, I'm going to just give it a quick 7. We'll see how this looks once we composite that in. So enter 7, save. Note that we may need to adjust these again once we composite that in. But for now, let's do a quick rough one here. Firstly, let's see how that looks. Hit M and let's put out this little arrow. Bring this over here, hit 1 to see how it looks. There you go. I'm going to turn off my overlay, hit Q to turn this off. You can see that's how my buildings look. And let's check out alpha, hit A whilst in the viewer. Okay, looking good, see? So as you can see, if I turn off the edge blur, it makes it super sharp. If I turn this on, it sort of fixes a few of those masking errors as well. Alright, looks good. So let's move on. Control shift a properties tab to find another building set that we can use. Now, I played this back previously. Hit A to turn off the alpha. And I think 680, around a 680 range, about 683 looks decent and like something we could use. So with that selected, let's just bring out this, drag this original clip out here. Hit tab, frame, hold. Put the input here. And I'm going to set this to 683. Enter. So basically, we just do the same thing. We create the roto and repeat the process. So I'm going to actually organize my nodes here. Bring this out. And in order to select multiple, again, left mouse button, click drag to create selection. And we repeat the process all over again. Again, I've also rendered this out if you're too lazy, but if you like to learn the hardships of being a compositor slash rotoscoper, feel free to do the rotoscoping yourself. You can even import what I've rendered to try and match and see if you can get the exact buildings that I use if you're very detailed that way. So, All right, so here it is. Again, make sure, as usual, always check your auto key is turned off. It should be a light gray instead of a dark gray, which means it is turned on. If you have any errors, as usual, use these buttons to go there and then this icon right here to delete the keyframe. So as usual, I created the same bezier for the bottom part of the building, as you can see. Again, I just click on it and pull out the lines to create those. So let's add another edge blur node again and blur it out and then view it in the alpha channel. In fact, I'm actually just going to use the default that I used for the same buildings. Copy this edge blur, select the Roto 5 and paste. Now let's view it in the alpha, hit the M key. A input to the 683 frame hold over here and then the little mask to here. Hit 1 to view in the viewer. Control shift A property to clear this. A in viewer to view the alpha. Control S to save. Okay, so let's view them composited within the composition itself. So firstly, I want to create a backdrop node for these. Press, hold, drag, left mouse button to create a selection. Hit tab, backdrop. This allows me to select all the nodes I've just created. Double click and I'm going to name this buildings set extension and i'm going to change the color to maybe like a like a light blue similar to the color of the glass panel over there control s to save okay now it's more ideal if i move this over here near to where the final merge will be and as you can see the match move right here drag these away and i'm actually going to merge that to where the car well to where the total merge is. Now this looks a little bit disorganized right now in my view. So I'm going to pull this down here to where my building set extension is. I'm going to create a few dots, press and hold control. Yeah, I'm going to enlarge this so you guys can see. You guys will thank me for that. So yes, finally she did it. Okay, we have our total merge here, which again, if I view this, hit 1. It's just what we did early on with the car fix, right? Actually, I'm going to change this to global. And I'm also going to turn off my input outputs. Now, we talked about the A1s and A2. So we have a bunch of A's over here. <laughs> Sounds kind of funny when I say it like that. So I'm going to have the A2 be the glass building. And then the A3, which again is hard to find the arrow. It just makes sure you zoom in really, really hard to be the merge 3, which is going to be the brown building. So basically, in that sense, the brown buildings will be in front 
of the glass buildings in terms of the layer order. Okay, so I just place this on top of my comp. Now let's actually move these into position using the transform node so we can actually see the rest of our comp. So hit the T key for, let's just start with the glass buildings. Hit the T key after your merge node. And we're going to adjust the anchor points. So let's actually turn off my other merge because it's getting too messy. Turn this off, double click on the transform and let's centralize this. So if you want to view this properly without the other composition elements, just make sure your transform node is selected, hit two and you can just see this. I'm going to just press the whole control and then move this a little bit more centralized. Hit one to go back to my viewer of the total merge that I created. And we're going to scale this down. Now, if you want to scale it by increments, you can just click on the field box, use the up and down arrow keys. Again, if you move left and right, you can control even to the tiniest minutia of detail. But for now, this should be fine. I'm going to make it a rough number here. I'm going to move this. Just, you can simply just drag it, especially if your transform node is active. Drag it somewhere here for now. We'll adjust it later. Let's scale this down a bit. Now, in order to use some elements as a reference for scale, I recommend comparing your building to the other buildings in the background. So I think something like this matches the height. You can even put it next to it temporarily just to see the height scale requirements. All right, let's do the same for the brown building. Now I can reactivate this node, hit the D key. I should bring this up. Now hit the T key to create the transform right after the merge. Hit three to view this independently. Control shift A so you don't accidentally adjust the transform. Double click and then transform. Press and hold control. Centralize this and then we do hit the one to view back to your original merge node. And then again, same thing. Let's adjust this scale. Now, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to have that brown building sort of overlay this right here. So it looks like it blends in well. You might have to do a little bit of rotation for this guy. So make sure you're selecting again, make sure you're selecting the correct transform. I'm going to do a little bit of rotation. Do some further adjustments. Again, these numbers are not set in stone. It really depends on how you adjusted your anchor point. Use your discretional eye as an artist. See that brown building just nicely fits with this one. Okay, looks okay to me. Now again, make sure you check your scale. We don't want our extended buildings to appear too wide or large in comparison to the actual buildings in the shot. So again, you can do that perhaps by putting it on top of the actual buildings in the background to measure its width. There are many ways to accomplish this task. But yeah, feel free to do this on your own. But I'm just going to set this up very quickly over here as what I've done. And uh, there you go. Okay. Whew. All right. I think that should be enough for one lesson. Eh? Okay. Now that we have all that set up, in the next lesson, we will continue with our subtle set extension and add the finishing touches. Now we made great headway into the shot so far. However, if you are lost, please, please, Post your questions and your screenshots. Don't forget the screenshots on the Q&A board and I will help you get unlost and unstuck. If not, carry on to part two of our subtle set extension lesson.